Gabriella Roman. And I'm Caitlin Entry. We are both students at Cornell University and are interested in deer. White-tailed deer are elegant, gorgeous animals that are a large part of our lives. Because the white-tailed deer is found all over the USA and into southern Canada, we're going to focus on the white-tailed deer today. Deer are in the family Cervidae. Cervids are hoofed animals, also called ungulates. All cervids have antlers, which are the bony projections coming off of their skulls. They also have an even number of toes. Cervids are ruminants, which means they have a four-chambered stomach. This kind of stomach is specially for breaking down plant-based foods and ruminating, which is when an animal chews cud. They regurgitate food and then rechew it. This helps break down plant matter further. Plant matter is low in nutrition and is hard to digest. That's why ruminants have stomachs that are specially built for getting the last bit of nutrition out of it. Other cervids in North America include elk, caribou, also called reindeer, moose, and mule deer, also called black-tailed deer. The two species of deer naturally found in the U.S. are mule deer and white-tailed deer. The two species are closely related, but there are some differences. Mule deer are primarily found in open, arid areas of high elevation of the western United States, whereas white-tailed deer live in open fields during the summer and woodlands in the winter. They are native to North, Central, and parts of South America. White-tailed deer can live for up to 10 years in the wild, sometimes even longer, especially if there's a lot of food to eat. The life of the deer starts in the spring. Deer less than a year old are called fawns and are typically born between April and June by female deer called does. Male fawns are called button bucks because they have nubs on their heads where antlers will grow in the future. Fawns have natural predators such as coyotes, bears, bobcats, and mountain lions. About 20 to 30% of fawns may die each year, but this is no problem for a healthy deer herd. But for a fawn to survive, it depends heavily on camouflage to avoid predators. Their spotted coats are crucial for camouflaging them. To not attract attention to fawns, mother does will leave their fawns for most of the day, returning only briefly to feed them. The fawns must lie motionless in the grass to avoid predators. Do you see the fawn in this image? By winter, the fawns have lost their spots and have grown a warm winter coat. The winter coat of a deer is drab brown, which matches winter vegetation. Have you tried looking for deer in a forest in the winter time? Let's try it now. How many deer can you see in this picture? Deer are very good at blending in with their environment, but drab brown isn't very good for blending into green foliage. In the summer, deer grow an orange coat because it provides better camouflage. What do you think of when you think of a male deer? Antlers. Antlers are made up of bone and are among the fastest growing bone in the animal kingdom. They can grow up to a half of an inch per day. Antler growth rates are similar to those of tumor cells and embryos. Do you know the differences between horns and antlers? For one, horns do not branch out or have points. Antlers do. For example, this buck has one, two, three, four, five, six points. Antlers always have branches coming off a main beam. A branched antler is called a rack. In order to grow large antlers, deer need plenty of nutrients, water, good genes, and reduced stress. If they are healthy, they will eventually grow a very large set of antlers. Antlers are always shed at some point in the year and are regrown every single year. White-tailed bucks lose their antlers from January to March. Antlers will regrow in the spring and summer. When antlers are regrowing, they are soft, full of blood vessels, and are very sensitive. They are covered in skin and soft, short hair, which is called velvet. The velvet makes the antlers look bigger than they actually are, which is an important adaptation that they have to protect them when their antlers are very delicate and sensitive. This buck bumped his antlers during the velvet stage. During the velvet stage, antlers are really fragile and delicate and they're regrowing. But lucky for him, antlers regrow every season, so they'll fall off and grow normally next year. In order for antlers to grow, nutrients such as calcium will start to pile up on top of the pedicel, which are the antler bases. These are shown here. They are located at the intersection between antlers and the top of a deer's skull. Once the antlers are done growing, the velvet dries up and then is scraped off by rubbing antlers against trees. This creates the stained and polished appearance of the fully formed antlers that we see here. Do you know why bucks have antlers in the first place? Bucks use their antlers to fight over the right to mate. They lock antlers and push against each other with all their strength. The weaker opponent will give up and run away first, and the stronger buck will get the opportunity to mate and pass his genes to the next generation. The rut is the breeding season of deer, which goes from October to January. Does that were mated with will give birth to fawns in the spring after a pregnancy of around 200 days. 
but does can postpone this birth if conditions are poor. Food is integral to deer survival and reproduction, so let's talk about what deer like to eat. Because deer eat food found in both forests and in fields, deer prefer edge habitats, such as where a forest meets a field. Edge habitats also provide deer with the opportunities to feed out in the open or in the forest to digest their food. Deer repeat this eating pattern throughout the day, but are most active during dawn and dusk, which means they are crepuscular animals. They are also nocturnal, which means they are most active at night, just like owls. Since deer are herbivores, which means that they are animals that do not eat meat, they need to have special features that will ensure their survival. Deer are prey animals, which means that they are animals that are eaten by other animals. One of the natural predators of deer is a mountain lion, like this skull that I have here. As you can imagine, deer have to be pretty fast in order to escape these guys. As a result, deer are very good at escaping from predators on foot. Deer can run at an average of 35 miles per hour and can jump more than 12 feet high. Prey have large eyes on the side of their head. This helps them easily detect motion and to see predators coming from all angles. Deer also have an excellent sense of smell, 1,000 times more sensitive than a human's. Aside from a great sense of smell, deer have large cone-shaped ears, which provides deer with a very good sense of hearing. Have you seen this animal in your area nearby? Use these clues to see if you have deer in your area. Deer footprints are very easy to recognize. They look like an upside down heart. See the two hoof toes? Animal droppings are a very useful tool in identifying and tracking wildlife. Deer droppings are usually in the form of pellets deposited in a pile. As our own territory spread through land development and forest fragmentation, we encroach on the territory of deer. We hope you enjoyed our special on white-tailed deer. Now you can go out and investigate your own backyard to see how much of an impact these critters have on our daily lives. Thank you so much for watching.